Good morning. Welcome to this another series lecture about electrical wiring simulator or AWS. Today we're going to perform the first activity about our uh, three phase induction motor or motors. Okay, so let's click this one. But before that, you can check your progress by clicking the profile and then scroll down. So, as what you can see, this is the list of the activities that we already uh, completed from the previous day. So, today we are going to perform the motors, the three phase induction motor. Okay. You can also change the name by clicking the settings here. Okay, so close. Then let's proceed to the motors. And then this is the first activity, the three-phase induction motor. Let's click play. And then let's discuss first the functionality of the circuit here. So as what we can see, this is a combination of the contactors that we had in a previous lecture. Okay, so let's identify the component here. So we have the supply. Okay, this is the line one, line two, line three. This is the line one, line two, line three. And we have the circuit breaker here. So this one here is the circuit breaker. This is the one, three. This, this is portion here, the circuit breaker. This is also the circuit breaker in this particular electrical diagram. And then we have the fuse. Okay, we have the fuse. We have the fuse here. Okay, and then this one is the normally open push button. Normally open push button, which is labeled PB2. And then we have here the K1, which is the coil of our contactor number one. And then we have here the thermal overload relay. Okay, so this one is the thermal overload relay for the overload protection. So it means that if there is an overcurrent in our circuit, an overload in our motor, so this one will trip. Okay, and then this one is connected to a three-phase induction motor. So this is the three-phase induction motor. So as what we can see, we can see that uh, this motor is already running by listening at the sounds. Or there is, uh, we can see the RPM value here. Okay, so uh, let's discuss the functionality of the circuit. So this is a very simple circuit. It means that uh, as of the moment, we don't turn on the breaker, so the motor will not uh, run. Okay, because there is an open circuit here. This is the, uh, we will be using the main contacts. So this is the main contacts of our uh, magnetic contactor around here. Okay, so we will be using that one. So the main contacts, this one is the main contacts around here. So as of this moment, when you start the circuit breaker, this one is open. So this is normally open main contacts. Okay, so what we can do here is when we press the PB2 and then hold, so the current will now be able to flow from this line here, from this line 2, okay, this one here, and then activating this magnetic contactor here, energizing the coil of the magnetic contactor, tuck. Okay, take note from our previous discussion in the motor controllers, if the coil is energized, then all the normally open contacts will be closed. Okay, so at the same time, so if this is energized, since this one will be closed, closed, and closed. So if all of these are closed, and this one is already turned on, so the current now can now be able to flow through this line here. Okay, so turning this three-phase induction motor. So as simple as that. So click and hold, the motor will run, release, the motor will stop. Okay, so let's try to wire it first. So the, this is the uh, control circuit, and then this one is the power circuit. So let's try to wire first the, the control circuit, which is this one. So we have to wire, get from line two to the fuse two. Okay, so line two, this is the circuit breaker. Oops, circuit breaker to the fuse two. So after the fuse two, we have to connect this one to the input of our push button here, push button number two. So the input, oops, the input, the push, uh, the line two to the input of the push button here. Okay, and then the output of the push button, okay, the output of the push button will be connected to the uh, A1 of the KM1. Okay, which is the coil. So this part here. Okay, so we can do it like this. Okay, and then A1 is around here, right there. Okay, and then going back to the A2, A2 to the output of the fuse one. A2 is around here. So we can connect it like that, and then like that, and then Okay, we can connect it something like that. And then A2, and then from this relay, uh, from this circuit breaker, going back to the, uh, from the fuse to the circuit breaker. So that's it for the 
control circuit which is around here now we, let's connect this uh, let's connect this power circuit so as what we can see uh, it goes directly to the circuit breaker around here okay so the circuit breaker to the uh, this one okay to our motor contactor here so click we can click like that click and then also like that this one and then that one okay and then from all of those three wires to the circuit breaker okay three wires to the circuit breaker we can now connect this one to the uh, normally open which is the normally open here the input of the normally open of our main contactor and then the output all of the output will be connected to the uh, overload with the THR here. So this one is the THR. So all of these will be connected individually. Okay. So like that. That one. And that one. Okay. And then all of the output of the THR will be connected to the UVW of our three-phase induction motor. So we can connect it something like that. Okay. So I think we're done. So what we're trying to do here is click the submit button to check if we got all the wires uh, connected correctly. So 14 over 14. So we're good. So now when we press this PB2, this normally open push button, we should expect that this uh, contactor will be energized. And then uh, you can hear in your own when you will be uh, when you will be doing this uh, wiring in your own devices, you are going to hear the sound of the motor, and then at the same time, visually, you can see that the RPM from zero it will move to a certain value. Okay, let's click the push button. Okay, so as what we can see, the motor is already running by looking at the RPM, the revolution per minute, which is 1,763. That is assuming that I am holding my finger in this push button number two. So if I'm going to release this one, okay, so the motor stops. So the RPM now is zero. Click again, 1,763, release, zero RPM. So in the next lecture, we will be uh, adding some components in this circuit. Okay, so see you in the next lecture.